morning, everyone. Um, so there was a time when when people watched television during prime time, they went to bed, they woke up the next morning and talked with their colleagues around the water cooler about what happened the night before. Well, as you know, people still talk about television, but the world has changed. With the advent of Twitter and Facebook, people now talk about their favorite dramas, about sports, about reality shows, about the news, and even red carpet events. As a result, there's been a whole ecosystem that has built up to support and facilitate conversations between TV shows and the viewers that watch them and comment on social media. It's been projected that this business or this idea of social television is going to be a $256 billion business by the year 2017. And there are a number of reasons for that, including the fact that advertising models must change, and new technologies are being developed to, again, facilitate this relationship between viewers and the TV shows. My part in this whole study is to really understand how we can derive value from the data that's being generated by viewers today. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about studies that we've done looking at data that, for the most part, is out in public for free. And I'm going to go through these very quickly, but there are papers to support all of the results that I'm going to tell you about. So where is the value exactly? So for a number of the studies that we've performed, we've collected data in the following way. We started with a large number of TV shows. We go out and get their handles from Twitter. We collect a list of followers that follow these TV shows. And then for those followers, we get their tweets as well as their social networks, so the people that follow them and the people that they follow. So for each show, then, we have this corpora of users, corpora of tweets, and the social networks that interact with them. And so we've built a number of recommendation systems on this data, um, both that are social network-based, product network-based, and text-based, where we use the tweets of these followers that basically communicate and interact with the TV shows. So one of the, the approaches that we've used to calculate similarity between shows is simply basically creating a document that represents each show, just all of the tweets that the followers say, and use that to calculate similarity between shows. And this works remarkably well when predicting which shows users on Twitter are going to follow. And we tried to figure out why this is the case. So we simply took a bag of words, so a bag of words represent each show, and correlated the frequencies of those words for each show with demographics that we got from pretty reliable sources, so from Experian and Facebook. And what we find is these words, in fact, when we rank them by the correlation with demographics that we know to be of the viewing audience, we get these really nice list of words that make sense. So for example, for shows that have a high proportion of female viewers, we get words like love and cute and happy. For shows that have a high proportion male viewers, we get game and zombie and battlefield and beer. Um, and when we do this for other demographics, for example, for different age demographics or whether there is a large proportion of college grads, we again get these lists that make sense. And the nice thing is that once we get these lists of words that represent a show, we can then use them to actually predict the demographics of followers in general of a particular Twitter handle. So we can use this data that's out there in public for free to basically estimate the demographics of the follower base of a Twitter handle. The other types of things we've done are focused on individual shows where we simply ask for shows like The Voice, which is a reality singing show um, that incorporates social media content, we ask, do these different TV event triggers, things like putting hashtags on the show, specific tweets, or even having a social media room lead to more engagement after they're put on the screen. And we find that, in fact, at least right now for The Voice, um, it looks like when you put these triggers on the screen, it leads to more engagement. And what's interesting is the inter engagement varies from East Coast to West Coast. So we think that this is because the show has been spoiled. So that's one thing for TV. Um, 
shows to think about that because people are talking so much about television, oftentimes um, the shows get spoiled when people are watching them, not only on the West Coast, but when they're watching them because they've DVR'd them or watching them on demand later. So social media content on TV leads to more online engagement. It's not just TV shows that um, have incorporated social media content. Um, advertisers have too. We've studied the Super Bowl over the past couple of years and asked when um, there's social media content in the ads, do we see more engagement or not? This is um, a slide that basically plots on the horizontal axis time from the beginning of the Super Bowl to the end for Super Bowl 2012 and the frequency of tweets in our database for the brand Teleflora. The red line corresponds to when the advertisement was shown, and you see that at that red line, right after, you see an immediate peak. So this data, again, that we're collecting in public for free gets us the ability to look at real-time response to advertisement. Now, this is what happened for Teleflora and a lot of other ads where we call this peaky buzz. So when the ad was shown, we get the spike, and then it dies down. On the other hand, there were a few ads that had sustained buzz over the entire Super Bowl. Chevy was an example of that, and there were a few others. And we found that the advertisers that had the sustained buzz over the Super Bowl were those that were playing a game with the viewers throughout the Super Bowl. Now, to the extent that you think engagement with viewers is important, um, Playing a game might be something that um, advertisers might consider. So if a brand wants to engage with customers online, they might consider playing an online game. We, not, we didn't only have the counts or the frequency of tweets about Teleflora or, or Chevy. We actually had the content of the tweets. And what we found was there was actually a difference in response by different demographics. In particular, we focused on gender. So for Teleflora, it was an advertisement where there was a female model. The model basically said, you know, if you buy me flowers, um, you'll receive whatever you want immediately. In that peak, the response was different, males and females, and the women were quite upset with the advertisement, while the men were quite happy. Now, who knows what Teleflora's objective was, but there was a difference, and Teleflora was not alone. There were differences um, for a lot of ads where females and males responded differently. And so we pushed on this a little bit further and asked, well, how does that play out in terms of the spread of information about brands after they've tweeted about them? And and so what we found is if we define influence by somebody tweeting something and then their friends or followers retweeting it, um, that consistently women were more likely to retweet women, controlling for their social network, and men were more likely to retweet men. And then when we, when we coded the tweets by whether the tweet uses female language or male language, women were even more likely to re retweet women, and men were even less likely to retweet women, meaning that both the content, what people were talking about, and the context mattered um, for the spread of information in response to these advertising campaigns. So advertising response varied by both demographic and so did influence. Finally, I want to tell you about one of the data sets that we're most excited about. Um, so GetGlue and Viggle are two social TV apps that allow people to check into TV shows just like you would check into a location on Facebook or Foursquare. Instead, viewers are checking in to TV shows, expressing their interest. And what this data looks like, this is just a plot for the show The Voice. On the horizontal axis, we have the beginning of the week, Zero is um, midnight Sunday. Again, on the end, we have midnight Sunday again. So from Monday morning to Sunday night on the horizontal axis. And each line, there are a bunch of colored lines, corresponds to a week's worth of data. And you see pretty consistently there's a peak of check-ins on Monday and Tuesday when the voice airs. And there's one line that has Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And that was a week when the show aired multiple times during the finale. Um, so what we can do with this data, so we don't just have it for the voice, but we have it for a lot of shows. 
thousands of shows. And so we can not only use this to build recommendation engines, but we can also now bring in those tweets and the social network and ask questions like, can we predict Nielsen viewership? Can we predict customer lifetime value for both shows and the networks? And finally, can we measure time shifting? So for which shows are people uh, ch checking in when the show is aired for the first time? And which shows are people waiting um, to, to watch? And we can do this all at the individual level as opposed to the household level, which is what set-top box data would have. So we can do a lot. There's a lot of value from publicly available data. I gave you five examples of what we're doing in our lab, and there's a lot more that we can do. Um, you might be thinking, well, the world isn't Facebook, Twitter, um, and maybe we want to know whether social content causes viewership. And so if you hold on for just a minute, we just finished a field experiment along with Mass Relevant to drive social content to TV shows. And we're testing just that, whether social will actually lead to more viewership. So please keep tweeting about television shows. It enables our research. And hopefully, um, you'll help us in the future. Thank you.